Hey, y'all. Welcome in this morning. My name is Jeff Nowak, WWL Digital Sports Producer. I'd like to thank y'all for joining this week's Fall Football Preview brought to you by the Louisiana Office of Tourism. Get together to Louisiana. Visit louisianahomecoming.com. And I'm joined by a great guest, Odyssey NFL Insider, Jason LaConfora. And we're going to break down uh, some of the games coming up this weekend, starting with the Saints on Sunday. All the games broadcast on WWL Radio. And uh, Jason, how are you doing this morning? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, technical difficulties are all the rage, but, you know, we got through them and we're here. There you go. Uh, All's well that ends well. (laughs) Right, right. Uh, So, you know, let's just dive right into it. You know, Saints-Titans, one of the stranger matchups of the season, made even stranger by the fact that it was added so late in the offseason because it's the 17th game added to the schedule. Um, You know, the Saints are facing off with the Titans for the second time in three seasons. Derrick Henry is not there. Uh, So they've gotten the uh, healthy end of that stick. But, you know, what's what do you see in that matchup? It feels like the Titans are a team that um, has very quietly, if possible, if that's possible, very quietly gone seven and two and has the best record in the AFC. Yeah, the pretty remarkable outing against the Rams last week. I didn't see that coming. Um, But uh, look, losing Derrick Henry is a big deal. It changes their offensive identity. It's going to limit them greatly. And um they were not a particularly robust offense a week ago, but they capitalized on two critical Matt Stafford mistakes, and they've got a front four that can absolutely get after you. And that, um, I think, will have to lead them and, and really be the strength of the team down the stretch. And you're talking about Simmons and Autry and Landry and Dupree. Um, they are they don't have to blitz. They don't need to blitz. They like to, to leave the safety Kevin Byard back there to jump things and make plays on the ball. And they get pressure with four. And it's 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 difficult. Um, now, if you stick to it and you, you run the ball and, and try to live the fight another day that way and, 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 you know, take your play action shots where you get them. That's probably uh, the way to approach those guys. And again, I, I think you, you don't really worry about Adrian Peterson. You you let them run the ball methodically now without a Derrick Henry, and you can't have your linebackers suck up when they go play action because the threat just shouldn't be the same. And frankly, without Derrick Henry, I don't think it can be the same. You know, you take away A.J. Brown, you force these other guys to methodically move the ball down the field. And um, I kind of feel like the Titans are due for a little bit of a slip up. They've had an amazing five or six game run here where they played a gauntlet of good teams. And now they're facing another one. Um, I I have a feeling the saints find a way to get this done, but it won't be easy. Yeah. Does this, does this Titans team kind of feel like, you know, they, they got that kind of emotional win over the Rams, but is this kind of like, you know, without that superstar, this is a big piece of the offense. Does do other teams catch up eventually once they kind of see, (laughs) Uh, what they're well, trying to do post the Henry injury? They, they better do it soon because, like I said, they, they've <laughs> gone through the meat of their schedule now. I mean, they faced the Bills and the Chiefs, and they beat the Colts twice. You know, their only real opposition in that division, and they beat the Rams. They've had a number of um, statement-type wins. So at a certain point, they get to play the Jacksonvilles and the, uh, you know, Houston's of the world again. So I, uh, yeah, I would think that the door would be ajar a little bit for, for maybe the Colts, although again, being swept by them is tough, but I, I got to say, I, the Tennessee's defense might be able to carry them a little bit here and whether they get the one seed or not, I don't know, but, um, I'll be fascinated to see what they can do down the stretch, what the offense does. And they've had some offensive line issues as well. And if any of that stuff starts to manifest itself. So you're telling me you don't believe the Jaguars uh, in the Jaguars beating the bills last week, nine to six, one of the stranger scores I've seen yeah. <laughs> throughout this season. Uh, you know, you don't believe that that's the uh, juggernaut in waiting. <laughs> no, no. Look, they can run the ball. Now Jacksonville can run the ball yeah. and the quarterback gets a little better every week. Uh, they've had a major defensive issues and, I don't know that one game against Buffalo has necessarily sorted it all out. Um, that was an ugly game. They found a way to win, and and uh, really Buffalo's offensive line had everything to do with it. So, no, I am not ready to crown the Jags. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad we got that on the record. Yes, we got um, that out of the way. So, let's – okay, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's go back earlier in the week and kind of go through all the games that are being broadcast on WWL Radio. That's AM uh, 870, FM 105.3. And uh, first off, we have tonight – 
another game of young quarterbacks, uh, assuming they're out there. We don't really know what to expect from the Dolphins, but we have the Ravens at the Dolphins, six and two at two and seven. Lamar Jackson versus Tua, Jacoby. You know, what's the right. what's the latest you've seen on that? Yeah, it's going to come down to game time. Um, I, my, my suspicion is it's Jacoby because I'm not sure that Tua is going to be able to have the kind of um, – warm up that it's going to take to, to, to shift the balance. He may, um, either way, it's a limited scope of the offense. They don't push the ball downfield. You know, their deep threats, Will Fuller and, and Devonte Parker are hurt more than they're healthy and they're hurt right now. They do have a move tight end and Mike Gusecki who could be problematic. The Ravens have struggled against tight ends. Um, the Ravens defense is not particularly good, but Miami's offensive line is so horrible that I do think a Ravens team that doesn't generate much pressure without blitzing will be able to do that tonight. Um, they will be able to squat on some routes. Um, you know, even like Jalen Waddles, an interesting athlete. He runs a four, three, seven. He's averaging eight yards a catch because with that offensive line and the limitations of the quarterback and two of being banged up, they, they really don't attack you deep. And the Ravens have given him the third most plays over 20 yards in the league. But I just don't know that that's going to be a factor tonight. Miami tends to turn the ball over a lot. Um, and they don't get a lot of big plays out of their their defense. So uh, I think these are two teams trending in different directions. Lamar Jackson and Hollywood Brown going home to South Florida. The one previous game they've played there, the first game of the 2019 season, they both put on quite a show. Um, Miami's secondary is better than it was then. Uh, but I, I still think the Ravens find a way to win this game pretty comfortably. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the one thing that, uh, you know, we talk all preseason and going into the season, all these projections, while wow, this team's going to be really good, this team's going to be really good, but it seems to always come down one way or another, at least in the regular season, to how you manage injuries and how you deal with the inevitable injury luck that you're going to have one way or the other. Uh, and the Ravens are, you know, have probably had the worst injury luck of anybody, uh, especially yeah. in the backfield of the running backs. I mean, Latavius yep. and Devontae Freeman were with the Saints in the preseason. Now, you know, these are pieces that have been part of the Baltimore Ravens attack. It's gone six and two. Yeah, How have they kind of been able to overcome that? Lamar Jackson is the best football player in the NFL. Um, <laughs> he averages, you know, he's producing 353 yards of offense a game. He's producing 62 more yards a game than he did in his MVP season. He had a defense then. He doesn't have a defense now. He had a Hall of Fame right guard then. He had an all-pro left tackle and an all-pro right tackle. He has none of that now. He had 2,000-yard caliber backs. You just said the Latavius Murray, they pick him up. He's their one. Then he gets hurt. They have, you know, we're talking about Le'Veon Bell and, and Freeman. So they don't have any threat there. It's it's all Lamar. Um He's making, he's pushing the ball downfield like he never did before. He almost as many as has as many yards thrown to wide receivers this year, 1,392, as he did his entire MVP season where he had just over 1,400. It was all Mark Andrews and the second tight end, Hayden Hurst and Willie Sneed in the slot a little bit. But he's leading the league in air yards per attempt at the same time. He's sixth in the NFL in rushing. I mean, this isn't this this doesn't happen. This is a two win team without the injuries with Lamar with the injuries and no Lamar. I don't know. Maybe they're a one win team um, because they, they've got a lot of issues right now defensively. Uh, but no, it's it's Lamar Jackson. Um, that it's as simple as that. That's as good as explanation as I could have hoped for. Yeah, I mean, the Ravens' backfield is probably the best in the NFL back in 2015. In 2021, it's not quite uh, up to snuff, but they're getting it done. <laughs> Uh, and yet, I think I agree with you. It's because of the most important position on the field. And, you know, and that kind of leads me into the next game we're going to talk about Sunday Night Football Chiefs at Raiders. You know, the Chiefs are a team that you could have made that same explanation about the last few years. It didn't really matter what happened around him. Pat Mahomes found a way. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case this year quite as often. There seems to be uh, much more difficulty. Uh, and the Raiders, you know, lost their head coach a few weeks into the yeah. season. They haven't really missed a step. They had a weird loss to the Giants last week, but. You know, what What do you see from that game? Look, the Raiders have their issues, but uh, they can get pressure with four. They're a lot like Tennessee. And Max Crosby and Yannick Ngakwe are a problem right now. And the Chiefs don't really have a right tackle. And the left tackle, Orlando Brown, formerly of the Ravens in that 2019 Lamar MVP season when he was a right tackle, um, 
sliding over to the left side with a team that throws as much and throws the way Kansas City does, it, it hasn't been um, seamless. So I think the Raiders can, can mitigate some things there. Um, if the Chiefs are averse to running the football, I think they're in trouble because the quarterback's trying to do too much, and now he's uh, turning the ball over at an alarming rate. Then um, they become pretty easy to defend. If they don't run the ball and you take away the tight end, you know, Tyreek Hill, I mean, some of those passes are very low percentage. So they're going to be a little bit hit or miss. That third element in the offense hasn't developed yet. Maybe by the time they play this game, um, Odell Beckham's on their, uh, you know, on their roster. I don't think he's going to play this week no matter where he goes, but you can understand their interest in him. Uh, quietly, their defense has gotten a little better over the past month, but the offense is a big issue. Uh so I don't know. I think the Raiders can make a game of this. I, I really do. Uh, they, again, have their issues. But would I be shocked if Derek Carr outplayed Patrick Mahomes in this game? I wouldn't. We, uh, I, I would like to say, I think it's a new record. We went 10 full minutes without mentioning Odell Beckham Jr.'s name. And, uh, oh. you know, well, we're you talking go. about some I teams that, that would be interested in the services. So I think that's a, that's notable. But, yeah, no, I've been – I think Derek Carr – uh, I kind of, I think I said earlier in the season, he's basically the new Philip Rivers. He's the guy who I wouldn't bet against him in a lot of weeks because he's just the yeah. guy who shows up and just finds a way to get it done. Not doesn't blow you away with nope. the arm talent with the stats, but he just seems to find a way more often than not. Well, and he, he completes a lot of his passes. Now, again, they're high percentage and a, a ton of them go to running backs and tight ends. And those are high percentage by nature. Um, but Waller is a matchup nightmare and you could force feed that guy and Padger stats pretty good. Um, and I think, you know, Jacobs has gotten his legs on him a little bit more. He was hurt earlier in the year. They're running the ball a little better. Um, so, you know, they, of, of course, you know, the, the Henry Ruggs things is, is just absolutely horrific and, yeah. and terrible all the way around. Um, and they've dealt with some unique adversity there. Uh, again, they're flawed. Most teams are flawed. But I, I think I think they, they could be catching Kansas City at the right time. And I love me some Hunter Renfro. Give me all your Hunter Renfro stock. Yeah. <laughs> He's just yeah, a he'll work it underneath. <laughs> um. And that kind of leads me into another fun wide receiver. We have we have segways galore in this. Uh, for the last game we'll talk about, then I'll let you go. Again, we're talking to Jason LaCanfora, Odyssey NFL Insider, previewing uh, the Week 10 matchups, broadcast on WWL Radio, AM870, FM 105.3. And the final game, Monday Night Football, Rams at 49ers. One team that, you know, I don't think we knew what to expect from early in the season with a new quarterback, but, you know, has done everything and more. Uh, especially on offense, and then a team that really has kind of been disappointing. The 49ers, we haven't really seen Trey Lance yet. Uh, it's still Jimmy yeah. Garoppolo's show, but what do you see in that matchup? Yeah, I mean, the 49ers' defense stinks. I mean, it's not <laughs> even marginal. It's it's bad. Um, it, it, I, I just I don't know any other way to say it. Bosa hasn't been good. Um, the loss of DeForest Bruckner has proved to be massive. Um, they've never really had much of a secondary. They used to cover it up by a front seven. That was special. Um, that's not the case anymore. They don't run the ball um, like they did in the 2019 season. That's for sure. Uh, so I, I look, I mean, Cal Shanahan has been there five years. He's won 32 games. Ten of them came in an 11 week span in 2019 between September and Thanksgiving. Outside of that, it's atrocious. And it's not that great, even with that 10, 10 and one run. So I think the Rams are licking their wounds a little bit from, from last week. Um, I think Matt Stafford isn't going to be pressured nearly the way he was by that Tennessee front four. Right. Uh, you know, I think Sean McVay has got a pretty good read on, on what's going on in San Francisco. And last week was San Francisco in my estimations chance to show you who they were uh, against the, against the Cardinals team without their, their best receiver and without their MVP caliber quarterback. And they got absolutely punked for four quarters. Um, yeah. And I don't think this is a safe landing spot against the Rams. I, I think they're headed to three and six. And I think the questions about Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch will continue to swirl, um, even though they got five years left on their deals. So I don't know if they're going anywhere. And uh, I think, yeah, uh, the transition to Trey Lance needs to happen because that team's going nowhere with Garoppolo. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. So, I mean, I you have to imagine at some point it's Trey Lance season. Uh, do, do you think that's going to happen Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's coming. Um, unfortunately, you know, he's had his injury issues, so they haven't been able to get him ramped up um, and get him all the practice reps that they, they may have under different circumstances. But the reality is uh, they, they need to start embracing their future because their presence, their present is not pretty. Present is not pretty. And yeah, I mean, quarterback uh, un- unavailability has been uh, just a story of this season, yes. whether it's COVID, whether it's injuries, whether it's retirement with Drew Brees and, uh, you know, Eli Mitchell on that 49ers team has been a revelation and, uh, you know, former Louisiana Lafayette standout and good to see him getting a run there ahead of Trey Sermon. So yeah, thanks again to Jason LaConfora for joining us this morning on your fall football preview on WWL, uh, going through all of the top games. You have one left, one left. And I wanted to let Jason go before I dove into this because no one wants to talk about something quite as depressing as LSU football on Saturday. <laughs> It's not depressing. Hopefully this team can continue continue their hot uh, play from Alabama. You say there's no moral victories. I don't care whether you have a moral victory. This team needed a moral victory. I think it says a lot about where this team is, that it desperately needed a moral victory that badly. But it got one at Alabama. Return home, face Arkansas. I think this will be a good matchup. Arkansas is not a team that really gets after you. They try to rush three a lot and play coverage. Uh, I expect to see a lot of Ty Davis Price. Expect to see a lot of Cord Kiner, who whatever other running backs are available, and it's going to be on the defense to show up over in Death Valley. Make sure to check it out on Odyssey, WWL AM, 870 FM, 105.3, as well as all the other games that we went through. Again, that's Thursday Night Football, Ravens at Dolphins, 7.15 p.m. Sunday at noon, you got Saints at Titans. Sunday Night Football, Chiefs at Raiders, 7.20 p.m. over on NBC and obviously on WWL Radio. And finally, Rams at 49ers, 7.15 p.m. Starts, all starts tonight, Thursday night football. Make sure you tune in to WWL for all those games. Make sure you check us out on YouTube over at youtube.com backslash C, backslash WWL Sports. Make sure you check us out on Twitter at WWL AMFM. You can follow me on Twitter at Jeff underscore Nowak. You can see it right there. I always get turned around in these live streams. Make sure you check us out on Facebook and anywhere else at odyssey.com backslash WWL or WWL.com. We'll redirect you there. Make sure you download the Odyssey app and make sure you have a great week of football watching. Join us on WWL. Thanks for watching. My name is Jeff Nowak. Who dat? <laughs>